شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن هدى للناس um, Are you ready? Yes, sir. Repeat after me. أشهد Allah, Allah, Ilaha, Ilaha, Illa, Illa, Allah, Allah, Wa Ashhadu, Wa Ashhadu, Anna, Anna, Muhammadan, Muhammadan, Abduhu, Abduhu, Wa Rasulu, Wa Rasulu. I bear witness, I bear witness that there is no God, that there is no God except for Allah, except for Allah, and I bear witness, and I bear witness that Muhammad. Muhammad is the servant, is the servant and, messenger and messenger of Allah. Of Allah. Takbir! Allah! 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 Welcome to Islam. Welcome to our community. We are all your family. Mashallah, all your sins are right clean. Uh, welcome to this new beginning. Come on, man. Give me a hug, man. Welcome, welcome to the family, bro. Welcome, welcome, bro. Um, let's go. Alright. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah, wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala wa ba'd. Inshallah, uh, tonight's recitation starts from verse number 21 of Surah Al Imran, and tonight we finish Surah Al Imran. And the topics which are discussed today in our recitation and the themes, we will go over them quickly, and then we will focus on a central verse where we can apply that in our fasting and in our day-to-day -day life. So, today Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the importance of Islam. Um, last night in the last raka'ah, there was this verse, inna deena indallahi islam The religion of Allah is Islam, right? Let there be no confusion on that, that there is another religion or there's another possible way out there to get to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This was the religion of all the prophets. Musa alayhi salam, Isa alayhi salam, Ibrahim alayhi salam. All of them were Muslims. And that's our belief. And the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the deen of Allah is Islam. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that Izza and Villa comes from who? Only Allah. Dignity and humiliation only comes from Allah. And mulk, sovereignty is Allah's to give. He can give whoever he wants, he can take it away from whoever he wants. You know this ayah, قُلِ اللَّهُمَّ مَالِكَ الْمُلْكِ تُؤْتِ الْمُلْكَ مَنْ تَشَاء وَتَنْزِعُ الْمُلْكَ مِنْ مَنْ تَشَاء وَتُعِزُّ مَنْ تَشَاء وَتُذِلُّ مَنْ تَشَاء بِيَدِكَ الْخَيْرِ In the hands of Allah is all goodness. Right? And this is something that we have to put our belief. Just like yesterday I mentioned, we focus too much on pleasing people that we forget to please Allah. Please Allah because in his hand is all the goodness and in his hand is who he gives dignity to and who he gives humiliation to. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions what is Islam and how do you get to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? How do you become beloved to Allah? قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهَ فَاتَّبِعُونِ You become beloved to Allah by following Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You know subhanallah nowadays there is a lot of Rhetoric out there that you know Quran is sufficient for us, right? Quran is the only thing that we need to focus on and let us ignore Sunnah or the Ahadith But Quran itself gives witness Allah is saying Qul, and this is not even from Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam It is Allah commanding Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to say that if you want to be beloved to Allah and The way to become beloved towards Allah is following Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam There is no other following Right? There is no other following other than following Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That's why categorically, explicitly it says, قُلْ أَطِيعُ اللَّهَ وَالرَّسُولُ Obey Allah and His Messenger. Allah and His Messenger. And then after mentioning the importance of Islam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala challenges another group of people which are Ahlul Kitab and specifically the Nasara. Why? Because they claimed Isa alayhi salam is the son of God. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that in Allah Adam wa Nuha wa ala Ibrahim wa ala Imran ala al-alameen 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in detail the birth of Maryam alayhi salam. Before the birth of Isa alayhi salam. Why? Because Maryam alayhi salam, she was born with a father and a mother, a natural birth. But then the miracle happened, Maryam alayhi salam, she asked Allah or, or she was blessed with Isa alayhi salam. Inna Allah yubashiruki bi kalimatim min husnuhu al-masihu Isa ibn Maryama wajihan fi dunya wal akhirati wa min al-muqarrabin. And you know, subhanallah, this is a deep point for us to understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does things which are outside the laws of this world, like the birth of Isa alayhi salatu wa salam. And there is a lesson for us in this story of the birth of Isa alayhi salam to elevate your du'as. Elevate your du'as in the month of Ramadan. Who was responsible for taking care of Maryam alayhi salam? Who was the caretaker? Zakariya alayhi salam, right? كُلَّمَا دَخَلَ عَلَيْهَا زَكَرِيَّ الْمِحْرَابِ وَجَدَ عِنْدَهَا رِزْقَ Every time he would enter into that mihrab, that place of seclusion of Maryam alayhi salam's worship, he would find rizq. قَالَتْ هُوَ مِنْ عِنْدِ اللَّهِ This has come from who? Allah. And that inspired Zakariya alayhi salam to make dua for what? For his own child. هُنَالِكَ دَعَى زَكَرِيَّ رَبَّهِ قَالَ رَبِّي هَبْلِي مِنْ لَدُنْكَ ذُرِّيَّةً طَيِّبًا O oh Allah, grant me a righteous, pure offspring. You know, subhanAllah, this is a dua that every young couple should make, right? So subhanAllah, this is like, you know, the rights of your children, they begin even before they are conceived. The rights of your children, they begin even before they are conceived. Through this dua that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taught you. And then when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will something to happen, you will hear this word twice in today's recitation, kun fayakun, be and it becomes. And um, Zakaria is saying that how will this be possible? قَالَ رَبِّ أَنَّا يَكُونُوا لِي غُلَامُ وَقَدْ بَلَغَنِيَ الْكِبَرُ وَمْرَأَةِ عَاقِرُ That I have reached to this old age and my wife, she is in this stage of menopause. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, قَالَ كَذَلِكَ اللَّهُ يَفْعَلُ مَا يَشَاء Don't ever question the actions of Allah. Right? This is strengthening your belief. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, after mentioning the story of Isa alayhi salam's birth, goes on to say, مَا كَانَ إِبْرَاهِيمُ يَهُودِيًّا وَلَا نَصْرَانِيًّا وَلَكِنْ كَانَ حَنِيفًا مُسْلِمًا You know, you argue a lot about Ibrahim alayhi salam. He was who? A Muslim. A pure Muslim. إِنَّ أَوْلَى النَّاسِ بِرَبِّ إِبْرَاهِيمُ لَلَّذِينَ اتَّبَعُوا وَهَذَا النَّبِيُّ وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا The most closest people to Ibrahim alayhi salam are those who are following his ways and the way of this Prophet. Who is that Prophet? Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this surah also talks about how we should engage with Ahlul Kitab. قُلْ يَا أَهْلِ الْكِتَابِ تَعَالَوْا إِلَىٰ كَلِمَةٍ سَوَاءٍ بَيْنَنَا O Ahlul Kitab, come on this same page with us. What is that page? Allah na'abuda illallah. Right? This is something we agree on, right? We should agree on in principle that there is only one God. We do not associate partners with that God. Right? Our worship towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pure without any partners. This element of tawheed, right? If there is no unity on tawheed, then there is no unity on anything else. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions this, and this is very relevant to what is happening today. يَا أَهْلِ الْكِتَابِ لِمَا تَكْفُرُونَ بِآيَاتِ اللَّهِ وَأَنْتُمْ تَشْهَدُونَ O Ahlul Kitab, why do you deny the signs of Allah? You yourselves are witnesses to the signs of Allah. يَا أَهْلِ الْكِتَابِ لِمَا تَلْبِسُونَ الْحَقِّ بِالْبَاطِلِ Why do you obscure and hide the truth with falsehood? You know, today we think media is the one who spins things around. Allah mentions that root cause in Quran 1400 years ago. They are the ones who always obscure and change the truth they will present falsehood as truth and truth as falsehood. So you as Muslims always stick with truth and with what Allah has commanded. And then Allah reinforces this in two more verses in Surah Ali Imran. وَمَن يَبْتَغِي غَيْرَ الْإِسْلَامِ دِينًا فَلَنْ يُقْبَلَ مِنْ Anyone who comes on the Day of Judgment with a religion other than Islam, فَلَنْ يُقْبَلَ مِنْ will not be accepted. وَهُوَ فِي الْآخِرَةِ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ They will free me from the Khasirin from the losers. Allah tells you, Ahlul Iman, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, ittaqullah haqqa tuqati. O you who believe, give fear Allah, have taqwa of Allah, and give taqwa its due right. 
How do you give taqwa its due right? By worshipping Allah and not associating partners with Allah. By thanking Allah and not showing ungratefulness to Allah. By obeying Allah and not disobeying Allah. That is how Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu described the definition of taqwa and how you give the due right of taqwa. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us this responsibility which is preach good and forbid falsehood. يؤمنون بالمعروف وينهون عن المنكر وأولئك هم المفلحون يؤمنون بالمعروف وينهون عن المنكر It's repeated some, some many times in this, in this uh, recitation tonight of enforcing and enjoining what is good, encourage good. You know, you stand for truth. As Muslims, we are always people of truth. And not only for ourselves, we have to spread that message out. Right? We have to tell what is true and what is falsehood. You know, it's not only... Uh, sufficient that you know we keep that to ourselves and do not spread this beautiful message of Islam. And then, Subhanallah, later on in in the in, in towards the last part of Surah Al Imran, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala mentions the context of the Battle of Badr and the Battle of Uhud. So, in the Battle of Badr, the people of Mecca they incurred a huge loss, but in the Battle of Uhud. Who incurred a huge loss? The Muslims. إِنْ يَمْسَسْكُمْ قَرْحٌ فَقَدْ مَسَّ الْقَوْمَ قَرْحٌ مِثْلُهُ Right? So Allah says, these days will alternate. Sometimes you will have highs, sometimes you will have lows. But, وَلَا تَهِينُوا وَلَا تَحْزَنُوا This is a very important ayah. Especially with what's happening in Palestine, what's happening in Gaza. This is a very important ayah. وَلَا تَهِينُوا وَلَا تَحْزَنُوا Do not get belittled. Do not feel that you're down and out, and do not become saddened. You will always rise above. You will always be in this position of a rank above. In kuntum mu'minin, as long as you are mu'minin, as long as you are believers. And um, so, inshallah, we're going to conclude right now. I know it's nine o'clock, but I want to recap something very important. Two nights ago. We said from part one, what was the message? Wakulu linasi husna. Say something to the people which is beautiful. Yesterday, when you do kindness, do not follow that kindness up with taunting. Today's message from Surah Al Imran: Wal kaazimin al ghayd, wal aafin an al nas, wallahu yuhibbul muhsinin. You know we are fasting today. We are fasting for this whole month. There will be times. When people will get on your nerves, right? People make you angry, right? Some of us, it happens on a daily basis. Someone just, you know, swings our mood. Okay, so inshallah, just practice this at least once in Ramadan. Someone who makes you angry, and that's a natural emotion. Allah says, Kaazimin al ghayd They quench their anger. Wal'afina anin nas. Not just like, okay, you know what? You made me angry, I will control my anger. Wal'afina anin nas. They forgive. Not only that, Wallahu yuhibbu al-muhsineen, in response they do ihsan. So just once practice, whether it's your family member, anyone, they made you angry, quench that anger, right? Suppress that anger, let that go for the sake of Allah, forgive them, and then do something good in return. Just one thing that you can do. So you know, subhanAllah, take one verse, apply that in the month of Ramadan, because that is the beauty of Qur'an. You do not want to be those people who hear the Qur'an and ignore it. You want to take Qur'an and apply it in your lives, inshallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us tawfiq and understanding.